Good evening and welcome to our Holy Evening Prayer Service tonight at All Saints. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please continue to check out our website, uh, our daily emails. If you do not subscribe to them, you can find a link to subscribe on our website. Um, and let us know um, if you are in need of something that we can deliver. We offer first this prayer. Holy God, your Son Jesus taught us to have trust in you. We pray that out of this darkness the light of Christ may shine, that out of this anxiety may come peace that passes understanding, that out of this time of trial may come renewed life and rekindled hope. Deliver us, we pray, from hatred and malice, from fear and mistrust. Bless all those who care for others, and give us all hearts and hands that reach out to those most in need. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the top of this live broadcast uh, on Facebook, you'll find a link if you haven't already downloaded it, you can use to, uh, to download and view the bulletin so that you can, if you wish, sing and pray along with us. We begin with the summary of the law and confession. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. A light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. 
reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are in light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Amen. I have been thinking lately that we are living in unprecedented times. At least in this part of the world, we daily face an undercurrent of uncertainty, fear, and anxiety. Paul speaks to the people of Ephesus about living in the darkness versus living in the light. Ephesus was a large city of diverse populations. It was the home of shrines and deities and the great temple of Artemis. Christians would have been in a distinct minority. The letter from Paul is certainly timely as Luke asks at one point in his writings, how then shall we live? And Paul says, live as the children of light. It seems as if many people in our world today have the same fears, if for a different reason, as the people who lived in Ephesus. As much as I try to be calm and as much as I try to be sensible as I listen to daily newscasts of doom, and as much as I want to do the right thing, I get caught up in all the hype and the anxiety that seems to hang in the air. My friend told me that she had stocked up on everything possible but had to make one last trip to the grocery store. As she went down the aisle, she noticed that there were only a few rolls of toilet paper left. Now, she told me, she had plenty at home, but thought that maybe she should get one or two more. And with that thought, she realized what she was saying. With the greatest of willpower, she walked past the rolls on the shelf but it took an almost physical act of will to not buy the toilet paper. I realized as I heard this story that I am as susceptible to that lurking darkness as anyone. I also know that I have witnessed much in the last week or two that tells me that people are seeking to live as children of the light. The people of all saints have responded to requests for help. People right now are being solicited to help with sending cards to people in our congregation who are particularly isolated. Requests have been made for people to help with picking up groceries or prescriptions. We have made many food boxes and bags to be handed out to those who are in need of food. In clergy calls, many stories are being sh shared of the way other Episcopal churches in our diocese are responding to help their parishioners. Many new services are appearing online, evening prayer, morning prayer, regular Eucharistic services, conference, centering prayer, all of them sharing the good news when we cannot physically be together and help to continue the warm, loving communities that we have built. Outside our own Episcopal family, many people are responding in large and small ways, trying to help their neighbors, trying to respond to the needs of the larger community. Many of these things are small things, but together they produce a great light. And our world, which often seems so dark right now, needs that light, great and small. I am sure that we do not necessarily always live as children of the light. At least I know that I do not. There is that impulse to move towards the darkness that brings fear and then brings selfishness, like, you know, the whole toilet paper. It does help me a lot when at the end of the news shows on TV, there is often a short story of something uplifting, something that helps me remember there are people really trying to be the children of light. Yes, we are living in unprecedented times. We have choices as to how we live day to day, just like we always have had choices, but now our choices seem more serious with more consequences each day. It is time for us all to remember, you know, that saying, do not fear, trust in the Lord. We will do all the responsible things to keep each other safe and look for how to live as children of the light. Remember your church community, your church family. Perhaps it is to this moment of darkness that you and I have been called to be and to bear the light. The light shines in the darkness. And the, and the darkness, darkness shall not overcome it. And an angel went from God to a town called Nazareth.
Chosen one of God most high. 
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding, and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless you and keep you. May Christ be ever light for your lives. May the Spirit of love be your guide and path for all. Grace for the day. In the name of the Father, Son.